From the vast reaches of the Mongolian steppe, an army of over 100,000 men swept aside all resistance, claiming territories that spanned continents. Their leader, Genghis Khan, proclaimed his life's ambition was to unite the world under one empire. Having conquered the East, the Mongols turned their attention to the West, where they would come face to face with some of the greatest armies of medieval Europe. Would Genghis Khan's legendary warriors finally meet their match? By 1221, the Mongols had taken cities throughout Asia, generating vast amounts of tribute from those they conquered. The West, however, was still an untapped resource. Genghis Khan sent his trusted generals, Jebe and Subutai, to attack Europe. With an army of 20,000, Jebe and Subutai took the West by surprise, raiding cities and destroying armies. Within two years, they had the prosperous Rus territories in their sights. But in their way was a Rus army of over 40,000 men. Outnumbered, Jebe and Subutai turned and started to head back east. The Rus sensed an easy victory and set off in pursuit of their retreating enemies. For eight days, the fast-moving Mongols stayed just out of reach. Then, Jebe and Subutai set their trap. They lured the Rus across the Kalka River and turned to fight. The Rus had fallen for one of the Mongols' most effective tactics, the feigned retreat. The stage was set for the Mongol army to test themselves against Europe's finest. The Mongols charged across the European plains with the fatigued Rus army in close pursuit. The Rus had fallen for the Mongol tactic of the feigned retreat and unknowingly followed them into peril. The Mongol general sprung his trap on the enemy scouts. With the Rus scouts cut down, General Subutai crossed the Kalka River. Here, he would stage a full-scale ambush on the vast Rus army. Subutai directed his warriors to split up and lie in wait for the enemy. Oh, 
For Subutai's strategy to be effective, he needed to spring his trap before the Rus recovered from their long pursuit. He sent his most fearsome Mangadai horse archers to draw the Rus quickly towards the ambush site. These highly skilled warriors could fire their bows rapidly while riding at speed. The Mongol provocation was effective, and the Rus hastily pursued. army had fallen for the feigned retreat and rode straight into the Mongol ambush. With the enemy surrounded, Subutai's battle-ready warriors descended from all sides.
Mongol ambush was devastating, and Rus numbers were reduced to a few desperate stragglers. Seeing the fate of their comrades, the last Rus encircled themselves in a makeshift fort of baggage carts. The Rus stockade fell. Despite a valiant last stand, the remnants of the Rus army were cut down. 
Spurred on by the crushing victory at the Kalka River, the Mongols advanced ever further into the heartland of the Rus. On the banks of the Kalka River, thousands of Rus were killed by the Mongols. The hunters had become the hunted. But in the years leading up to this Mongol raid in the west, Genghis Khan had been focusing his attacks on the east and the Qin dynasty of northern China. Controlling wealthy lands and trade routes, Qin cities overflowed with riches. In 1210, the Qin's new ruler, seeing Genghis Khan as a threat, demanded that he swear loyalty to him. Genghis Khan refused. To the Qin, this defiance was a declaration of war. The Qin had a huge army, and their territory was protected by vast fortifications, known today as the Great Wall. The Mongols had never faced a more formidable enemy. Genghis Khan knew the only way to defeat the Qin would be to take their heavily defended capital city, Zhongdu, on the other side of the Great Wall. Genghis Khan would be committing his people to a long, hard war. Would the rewards be worth the cost? For answers, he looked to the gods. Climbing a sacred mountain, he prayed to the eternal sky. After four days, he received his answer. The Mongols would be victorious. With divine reassurance, the Mongol army set out across the steppe. They must break through the Great Wall to destroy the Qin dynasty and further expand the Mongol Empire. The Qin fortress of Shang Jaku blocked Genghis Khan's path to the Great Wall. Seeing the strength of the defenses at the front of the fortress, Genghis Khan dispatched his scouts to seek out an alternate approach. Mongol warfare relied heavily on the mobility of mounted scouts. They could travel at high speed, explore the terrain, and gather information on enemy weaknesses. The Khan's swift riders advanced up the steep mountain, discovering a hidden path above the Qin fortress. The Qin had deployed patrols on the mountain above their fortress, 
But the Mongol scouts, although isolated from their army, had the advantage of speed. The Mongol riders discovered an embankment leading to the back of the fortress. Here they found far fewer Qin defenses than at the front. Learning of the weak defenses at the back of the fortress, Genghis Khan saw his opportunity to attack. The Mongols began their ride to battle. If the Mongols took the fortress, they could freely advance on the Great Wall. burned the enemy building, claiming valuable spoils from the ruins.
Ладно. The Mongols sacked the fortress of Shang Jaku, ensuring that they would not be attacked from behind as they advanced on the Great Wall. With the Qin fortress posing no further threat, Genghis Khan called on his people to bring in their mobile camp. Next, the Mongols needed a base close to the Great Wall. They targeted the Qin village of Yangcheng. Hearing of the Mongol advance, nearby Qin villages began sending attacks, hoping to weaken Genghis Khan's army. Come 
Bet Venom.
I'm going to get you 
By destroying the Qin village, the Mongols had stopped the attacks from its garrison.
Chong fell to the Mongols, and nothing now stood between Genghis Khan and the Great Wall. It was time to face the Qin head-on at the Great Mountain Pass at Juyong. In order for Genghis Khan's assault to go as planned, he would need to move his base closer to the Great Wall. Fortunately, the Mongols specialized in the construction of mobile camps and could easily pack their holdings and move to a new location. Ой, 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 ой,
formidable barricade, thought insurmountable, finally bent to the will of Genghis Khan. keep at Juyong Pass burned to the ground, giving the Mongols a secure route into the heart of Qin territory. As pillars of smoke billowed from the mountain pass, Genghis Khan charged forward into new lands and on to his ultimate goal, the wealthy Qin capital of Zhongdu. <laughs> <laughs> 